God, you drive me nuts. Red alert. Last night, the power went out. Good morning. Red alert. Last night, the power went out. There was a power outage, like, all the way from, I think, far, I think farther south from, than Grand Prairie, all the way through to, like, Spirit River, like, all the way north to Spirit River in Rycroft. And so the power was out for a whole 18 minutes. Um, and so um, the greenhouse in that time dropped down to 2.6 degrees Celsius. So luckily, before the power came on, and so luckily um, it stayed above zero. Yeah, Lorraine called me at 3, 3.02, a.m. because uh, it was her turn to stay at the greenhouse. So she was sleeping in the fifth wheel and the alarm went off. We have uh, this alarm. I'll show you. So we have an alarm that uh, sends the temperature notifications into the um, fifth wheel. And then we have it set that if it gets to be eight degrees or cooler an alarm goes off, wakes you up and tells you to get your butt in here. So Lorraine called me uh, at 3.02, and from Southside Grand Prairie, I made it here in 20 minutes. Just before I got here, the power came back on. Luckily, the furnace fired right back up and uh, started to heat it up. So, we, uh, we had a, a freeze-up in November where we ran out of propane, and so we decided to come up with all these, all these elaborate ways to prevent that from happening again in the future. And so... One of those ways was this. Oh, sorry, I'll turn that off. Sorry. So one of them was this. So now we have a, um, a, um, what do you want to call it? Like a transfer uh, or a double throw enclosed switch. But anyway, so we, uh, we have a backup generator now. And so if the power goes out, we can fire up the generator. The hiccup in our plan was that it was minus 30 degrees outside at 3 a.m. in the morning. It was minus 30. And trying to get a generator fired up. This is a really big generator. Like it's, um, I think it's like 7,800. Yeah, like 9,000 starting watts, 7,200 rated watts. So trying to get that sucker started in minus 30, not happening. Especially after it hasn't ran for six months. Um, before winter, um, I serviced it and I like gave it new fuel and changed the oil and cleaned the filter and serviced it. Um, but like, try getting this thing started uh, in minus 30, yeah, right. And it's been inside now for, you know, like it's, it's not going. So, um, I drugged that generator in here this morning. Uh, it's heavier than hell. And uh, new plan new plan. The new plan is uh, it used to be sitting outside and so this cord here this cord that runs up into that um, I don't know what you want to call it, the switch uh, and then that runs into the panel so it powers the greenhouse and that generator would be enough to like run three furnaces and like the lights and some fans and stuff so yeah, anyway, new plan is to have that generator sit inside permanently, and I'll just run the exhaust outside. That way, uh, if the power goes out, at least the generator is warm and it can be started. Um, and I'll charge the battery too so we can use the electric start because that battery is frozen solid. So we found some hiccups in the plan, and then the other plan is, um, now we got one more backup plan. So if that doesn't work, if, uh, we can't get the generator started or whatever, ran out of gas or any problem whatsoever. Um, we have a ready heater, and so I'm planning to get another one. So we will have, um, we have a big 100 pound propane bottle. We've got our ready heater. And then, um, I know it sounds goofy, but the fifth wheel that we stay in has two backup batteries. So when it's not getting its power supply from the panel in here, uh, it, it, it turns on the batteries and so we can run um, an extension cord from the external plugs on the fifth wheel and we can run that ready heater for like probably close to four or five hours so that would be last resort if we can't get if the power goes out 
and we can't get the generator started, we, we have the backup power support, support there, but you don't want to rely on that. You want to get that generator started up. So today my goal is going to be to do that, uh, get that all fired up. And um, I also, we've just, we've just been kind of busy, so I haven't really got a chance to tell you what's going on. But look at this. We've got a whole bunch of our plugs in, our uh, springtime plugs. This is the first shipment of many. So some of them need a little bit of water. You can tell they come in off the truck. A little bit sad. But looks like Lorraine watered this morning. Mom? Yep. Did you water this yep. morning? Yeah. Oh, yes, I did. Oh. She watered this morning. So, um, but yeah, succulents. We got a whole bunch of cool stuff. Got some really cool jade plants in. And luckily, no damage last night. And then we also, uh, we did that, remember I was telling you guys about that um, uh, houseplant air purifying sales event we were going to have? Um, well, we did it. It happened. Uh, it happened Friday, Saturday. I didn't get to film any of it. But this is all that's left. We got a couple jade plants, got a couple aloe plants, two money trees, one hanging basket, and a few other things. Um, but the orchids weren't popular. I don't know what, I don't know why the orchids weren't, weren't popular. Um, only 22 bucks like 22 bucks and we got some really nice colors but the orchids didn't sell so I might have to bring one home maybe I'm going to move this curtain today so it's time to leapfrog the curtain down and, and heat another bay and get the plants into the next bay down so uh, let's do that God you drive me nuts what? So for when the yoga happens yeah. we're going to have to drop this curtain again because nobody wants to do yoga next to an ugly curtain yeah, well, we could drop that curtain. We can move it or take it down for a day or whatever. So what we're talking about is we just moved, you know how we have two curtains, um, and we use the curtains to only heat certain areas of the greenhouse. So um, we're, we moved that curtain. It used to be right here on this red pole. And so we moved it down two full greenhouses. So now we're gonna heat all the way over to those baskets over there. Uh, but we're gonna take this curtain and we're going to move it down two so that we're in the blue bay. And then we'll have this this greenhouse and this greenhouse to uh, plant our flowers. Because uh, in two weeks we have a huge, huge, huge shipment. And then on top of that, we scheduled an event. We're doing volunteer days. There's two days where people can come volunteer and just plant flowers and be in the sun and wear shorts and, and uh, enjoy themselves. And we'll have a snack and lunch. And then on one day we're doing macrame. On the second day we're doing yoga with uh, local studios that offer those services. So we're gonna do that in uh, this bay. So we're gonna take this table down and then uh, yoga and macrame will be done here with the overhead rods. Um, they'll bring the yoga mats and we'll clean it up real nice for them. And we'll make that happen. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do it. Let's move this curtain down two more. I'll show you what it looks like for space now. It's always, it always looks ridiculous when you drop a curtain and you're like, oh, look how much room we have. Okay, so this is us now. I'm at the back curtain, and this is all we have. We're just in this little area, and we're we're getting kind of like relatively cramped in here. But what we're thinking about is we're thinking about these plants. We have to transplant these today, and also uh, Lorraine is running out of seed. Like she doesn't space. have any seed space. So this this table's full, and so we want to move the seeds onto that table there. So. We need to make room. So, let's do it. Let's drop the curtain. Are you excited? Oh, so excited. I, I just can't wait. This is just thrilling. Oh, freak. <laughs> okay, here we go. Check it out. We have lots of room. Here I am at the seat table, and look at all this room. So, this is a bunch of Christmas decorations that are uh, left over that we need to put away into the shed, so I'll do that today. And then Lorraine is uh, going around making sure. It's always a good idea if you have a greenhouse of any kind, whether it's a residential or a commercial greenhouse. It's a good idea to like every spring or every other spring, go around your greenhouse with like, um, we use home and garden raid, or you can use like an actual insecticide of some sort, like a safers or something like that. And um, and just go around and like, here, let's see what you're doing there, Lorraine. Going around. Let's see. So she's going around and she's... Hitting table legs. Yeah, hitting all the table legs. Any weed that you see, like any weeds or dandelions or anything that's growing any green anything green that's growing in the ground 
um, spray it and uh, and it's you know I've read you can do it with bleach as well like get a backpack sprayer fill it up with bleach and water and then go around and bleach all your tables so we uh, I just went through a can over there on that wall and she's going around getting table legs it's just a good idea to reset your greenhouse get it back to zero you never know what kind of bugs found their way in um, in the fall or over winter or something so anyway but now look at all this room we have look at all these tables all right, check this out. So, do you guys remember the uh, do you remember the germination table I was really excited about with the sand? Well, here it is, and um, it works really well. So, okay, so check this out. Okay, so the way I have it set up is um, I have underneath here we've got the table, and then I have um, about an inch or so of sand in here, and then in that sand is buried a heat cable. Then I've got um, poly on top of the sand and the heat cable. Then the seed tray sits directly on top of that and then we cover it with a thin layer of, uh, actually this is like painter's tape or painter's, um, poly, painter's poly. So, so you can keep your humidity in there and keep a little bit of even heat. So, check this out. So the way I have it set up is this heat cable plugs into this thermostat. So the thermostat, it just turned on actually, you can see it says 21.7 degrees. And then this little red light turns on right here. And that means that this cable is now turned on. So it turns on and it gets it right back up to 22. I've got the minimum temperature set to 20 and the uh, maximum temperature set to 22. So this won't cool it off. So if it gets to be 22 and a half degrees, it'll just turn the cable off. It won't actually, it doesn't have any cooling factors to it. So uh, we still need to monitor the temperature that way. Like if it ends up getting to be 27 degrees under there because the sun is coming through the greenhouse, then, um, we still have to take the top top layer of poly off and monitor that. And so now we, but now we actually have a way like we can monitor the temperature of the seeds with this big number, uh, with the big number. So I have uh, two two heat cables going. So I have one on this side and one on that side. And then uh, if we're nervous about the reading on that on the digital thermostats, um, we can always use a uh, a thermal reader and uh, and actually just scan it. You know, I would do it under the poly lid. And so you can actually uh, scan the table at all these different spots. And uh, it, it's actually incredibly consistent. And consistency is what you look for when you're germinating seeds. So, um, yeah, that's what, that's what we came up with for a table, uh, for a germination table that uses sand and heat cables. And then um, the thermostat probe, uh, it comes off the top of the thermostat runs over here, I got it coiled up, and then the thermostat probe runs in. And I actually, uh, at first I had that thermostat probe plugged into the sand. And then what I was realizing was I was using my scanner, and I was scanning the top of the trays, and the, uh, it would, you know, this digital thermostat would say the sand was being kept at 22 degrees, but then I'd, za I'd zap it with my, with my uh, reader, and the seeds would actually only be 16 or 17. So the, so I had to move the, um, I had to move the thermostat so that it's underneath the seed tray as opposed to in the sand. Then we're actually we're then we're actually controlling the temperature on the seed tray as opposed to the temperature in the sand. So, but uh, it's working really well. So I'll show you the uh, I'll show you our germination. Okay, what do we got here? So these are pansies, and uh, like this is actually really good germination. And so after they uh, after they get their two basil leaves, which is what these are called, when you get your two the two first leaves are called basil leaves, whether it's a, a pansy or not, um, then you can take it out. You know, if you leave it under the poly or underneath paper, those seeds, those little germ germinated seedlings, will continue to stretch taller and taller and taller, trying to reach for the sun. So after they germinate, then you you take them out. So these guys are almost ready to come out. But waiting for a little bit more germination. Anyway, super super excited. This is this is probably the best germination we've had so far. So, are you excited there, mom? No, not ever. Do you think it works? Yeah, I think it'll work. Yeah. So, anyway, there's the uh, there's the update on the uh, seat table. Well, I think that's it for a day, so 
we got that furnace over there is running. This furnace over here is running. We're on our way out the door. And uh, we also set up the ready heater. Like the ready heater is now hooked up to a propane bottle. All we gotta do if the power goes out is run an extension cord to plug it in and it's ready to go. So hopefully there's no problems tonight, but you never know. But uh, anyway, that's a day. See ya. See ya.